Hi there, I'm Joshua Finn from JNH Aerospace, and you should be coming directly from the build video for the 2021's uh, Super Protege from JNH Aerospace for the 2021 Science Olympiad Elastic Lunch Glider contest season. Yes, that's a mouthful. Uh, we have balanced the airplane, finished constructing it, have our little hand catapult. Next step is to check the weight of the airplane after it's been balanced. So I have my scale out here. Scales are available on our website. And we wait for it to initialize. Cool beans. I guarantee mine's a porky pig because I didn't do a whole lot of sanding. And indeed, this one's especially porky because I got heavy handed with the glue, so it's five grams. So I don't think we're gonna be too worried about it being down to weight for our purposes here. So we're simply moving on to the next side of things. Should mention you can build these much lighter if you use the um, separately available tapered fuselages. I don't know that even, even shows up, but these are hollow. Um, these are solid. The reason we include them in the kits is because they're more readily available so we can get you a good supply of these kits that way. So let's do a few test glides with the airplane. All right, so I've got the glider. Again, have made no adjustments. I've got it CGing right there, which is where we typically want these to balance. So let's see what it does. Oh, it's very nice. Very, very nice. All right, so what we saw was that in pitch, the airplane was stable. I did notice it was flying a little slowly, so I'm actually going to um, Actually, I'm not. I'm going to add a little bit of nose weight to it. Because um, I think it's still probably a little tail heavy. And then the next thing is we want to establish, assuming you're right-handed, you've built this as a right-handed airplane, you want this airplane to turn to the right in the glide. And the way that we achieve that is we bend the vertical tail off to the right. And so we're just going to pinch this over and gently bend it over there. Be careful that you don't crack it. You can fix it with CA glue, but this will crack if you bend it too abruptly. You can see now, we've got that bent over there. So you want a little bit of a crease in there to get it to bend over, but you just approach it gently. So now, the airplane is probably going to give us uh, about what we're looking for. And indeed, it circles off to the right out of frame. Now the problem that we're seeing is that the airplane is turning fairly tightly so when I chuck this airplane pretty hard it is going to roll in like that. And I'll demonstrate so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see the airplane dove in and started cranking in to the right. To correct for that diving in what we're going to do is we're going to add a little on since the airplane is circling to the right on the left side of the tail I'm going to bend the tail up just a little bit, just like that. Excuse the giant band-aid on my finger. That's probably a little too much, but that'll get us going. The other thing is, since the airplane is starting to roll in like this, we're going to want to go in and on the outside, so this little left wing, I'm going to twist the left wing like this. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to bend until I can hear it cracking a little bit. If it breaks like that, that's okay. You can go back and you put some glue on there and you can fix that. Don't be afraid to do that to it. A lot of you out there have trouble getting these airplanes to fly because you're not willing to do what I just did, which is to crack the airplane until it sounds terrible. You have to do that if, you're, if you want to get this airplane to fly well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see the effects of those changes. Maybe I got it to dive in in spite of everything I did. Oops. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to discover somewhere along the way. This thing actually started peeling up. So before I make any other adjustments, I want to fix that. So I'll be right back and I'll glue that and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've got that fixed, so we're going to try this once more. Oh, there we go. Except it still needs to turn a little bit more, so we'll fix that with some more rudder. 
All right, so all we have to do to get more rudder is just bend this rudder over some more. And again, I know that alarms some of you. Let's see how much we've got there. That's what you need. So now I'm just going to give it a glide this time so you can see the glide pattern. Makes a nice table ornament hanging like that. <laughs> All right, so we've established a nice glide there. We just want to do a high-speed check again to verify everything's going so well. So we're going to check it a little bit harder and nice and level. And that circles. I know that didn't all show up on frame, but what we saw is that the airplane took off straight, pitched up, and rolled at the same time, and then just decelerated into a glide. That's the behavior that you want to see before you start catapult launching your airplane. So after this, we'll go outside and we'll show you how to execute all of that task. All right, so now we're outside and we're going to just do a, a quick review of things. So what we want to do is show a level launch. We're using the catapult now. And let's try to not let it slip out of your hands like that. Try again. All right, so we're seeing the airplane's nosing down pretty strongly. So I'm going to bend in a little bit more up elevator, which you can see right here. Uh, it is going to need some washout in the wing tips, so we'll address that later. Still doing it. Okay. Okay, so at this point, when it's doing that, we're going to want to bend these wingtips up like this. No. So you see how it's bent up? We do the same thing over here. That may be a little much. And one thing you'll have to be aware of is if I bend this side up a whole lot, and that's actually going to cause the airplane to roll the other way, because these work sort of in reverse. All right, so we're still nosing over a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a tiny bit more washout to these wing tips. You can see it bent up like that. Now, you may not always have to have this problem. My uh, other one of these I'm currently rocking does not, uh, does not need all that. The other thing I noticed is the airplane wasn't turning as much as I wanted to, so I'm going to add a little bit more of that uh, right rudder offset. And now we're going to start angling it up a little bit as we launch. And we're dropping in there. And it looks like it needs some up elevator. So I'm just going to add a little bit more up elevator on that trailing edge. Give that another shot. A little better. There we go. Looks like it just needed a little more power on that launch. <laughs> and there we go. Look at that. To watch this car, we go, go, see here, race, go, go. Where is it? Go. All right, so we're going to pull back a little bit further this time.
So what you've seen there is the trimming. You've seen several flights uh, in which I've not made any adjustments, just been tweaking the launch angle a little bit. You notice, If you'll notice, I'm launching pretty much straight up. Uh, for really low ceilings, you may want to be launching at a shallower angle. Um, something kind of like, I don't know if I can, something about like that. Uh, but for really high ceilings, you'll be going straight up, possibly even slightly over on your back if the airplane really tends to uh, nose over like that when you start really pulling back. Um, this washout technique works very well uh, for moderate launches where it's nosing over, but if it keeps, if, if it comes back when you start going much faster, it's easier to just turn the airplane over on its back and that'll actually make it come out and just stop right at the top and drop into the glide. Uh, there, are, Since this is our third year producing some variation of a Super Protégé kit, there are now, this is now the third trimming video on this airplane, so we'll put some links down below of pre, the, the previous two years trimming instructions for this airplane. So um, yes, it's a different design each year, However, the trimming techniques are the same across all of them. The, and so you'll get to see me working through trimming three different airplanes uh, because each model that you build is going to be slightly different. So um, that should give you enough resources to get working with the airplane. You need to understand that each airplane is slightly different and this is a process you have to work through. There's a little bit of an art to it. It's worth your trouble. Uh, you'll also notice in this case, I didn't change any nose weight or anything. Frankly, I got lucky. Normally, that's not the case. If you look at the previous year's videos, you'll see that I spent a lot of time working on that. So, please look at those videos. Any questions, comments, put them in the comments section below. You can contact us through our website. Uh, if you do have specific trimming uh, issues with a specific airplane, contact me. Um, record video of your airplane flying. I need actual video because every, each of us describes what the airplane is doing differently, but if you can show me a video, I can start to diagnose exactly what's going on and then we can work through trimming your airplane if you're, if you're having severe issues with it, um, that these videos are not uh, able to help you dial out. So um, thank you for your time, have a good time flying, and we'll see you at the field. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.